Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to a show where I will be solving Advent of Code. Uh, and thank you, it's Freyon, <laughs> says you're an inspiration. I appreciate that. Um, so if you haven't heard of uh, Advent of Code, you can go to adventofcode.com. And um, what this is are daily coding challenges that are um, holiday themed, I guess I would say. Um, and so I've done every day uh, up until today and they, they released a new challenge every day at uh, the same time um this was released what nine hours ago no 11 or 12 hours ago i just i haven't looked at it yet i have not looked at the challenge this is going to be me seeing it for the first time and attempting to solve it from what i've heard is it's hard and that's unfortunate i wanted to, i wanted to have an, just an easy time an easy time what's up client yeah yeah uh, we have a christmas theme drop game for those of you that haven't been here in a few streams and uh if you play <laughs> If they, if uh, you somehow bump into other people, you'll potentially yeet them off the screen. Uh, uh, Anders says, uh, today's was really fun. I hope so. I hope I don't struggle. And Scrooge McDuck Sauce, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Oh, I totally forgot to bring up all my, uh, all my, um, activities and such. Um, B-Dub with the sub while I wasn't streaming. Thank you very much. And Footy Boy Rocks with that three-month Twitch Prime resub who says, can't stay long, wanted to say good morning. Well, good morning. And what's up, the She-Boss? Good morning. Um, great, 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 great. Let's write some code. We're just gonna, we're gonna get some straight into it. I guess for anybody that's new here, I'll show you how to play the drop game because that'll keep you entertained while we're doing this. If you do exclamation mark drop me, that will make a snowfall, snow, snowflake fall from the sky with your avatar on it. Let's code! Uh, did it not work? Wait, do we not have... Oh, there I am. Okay, I was about to say, do we not implement drop me in this game? But yeah, as you can see, if the snowflakes hit each other, uh, there is some collision detection, and unfortunately, those, those snowflakes up at the top are gone. Uh, but if the snowflake lands on the tree, you'll get a little ornament. Uh, there's like a 90-second cooldown. So uh, you... Um, hey, the she-boss! Thank you for the gifted sub to Terrazoid. Nice. Was that a random gifting or did you pick Terrazoid specifically? Um, but yeah, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, oh, look at that. Look at that. Uh, Snapdragon and uh, Mr. Knot and I, I, IFX and Terrazoid. You all, you all made it on the tree. <laughs> it was random. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, oh yeah, welcome back, Clink50. It has been a while. Um, all right. Well, actually, well, before we code, let's just say hi. If you, <laughs> if you, um, if you want me to acknowledge you, you want to say hi, just say hi. We'll do like thirty seconds. Anybody that gets that, that says hi, I'll just say hi. Go, go. What's up, uh, Vinit and me, not Santa and Randomness and Cohen and Blake and Handsome Squidward and Hey, Bros Core. Thank you for that sub. Uh, who else we got? Sequel Gorgester and uh, Hugo Doss and Brainless Box and Mark. How's it going, Mark? Mark's, Mark Mark was the first person to say today's challenge is hard. Uh, what's up, Impact Chats, chats and Sea Roar? Uh, and get some, can I explain? Please explain why 4-H loop is blocking. And hey, Andrew Lane, eight months, Pog Champ. <laughs> Thank you very much for that resub. Uh, why 4-H loop is blocking and why it's not ideal to use Node.js. Uh, it's, I wouldn't say that, I don't, I don't think it is. <laughs> we can, I can maybe talk about it. Uh, Ploy Rich, how's it going? Hello, DF, DVF, and Jay Getachu, and Shin Dry, and uh, Mr. F, and Hemi Codes, and Dead Bender, and Curious Dive, and The Real Shetty. What do you think is up with monoliths just appearing around the world? <laughs> Not gonna comment on that. What's up, that Udar? And Mad Shrub, and Fiddle Walk, and Inframath Music. It has been a long time. Thanks for being here. Hello, uh, Ziaf, and John, and Dario, and Depopom, and Roaming, and Cold Sardines. All oh, thank you very much. And Funny Boy Rocks, good morning. Hello, Fishy Dev. It's been a while, Fishy Dev. A lot of, a lot of old faces in the chat today. That's great. Hello, Vicus, and uh, Jerry, and Shyhawk, and Bro Broscore, and Shaggy. How's it going, Shaggy? I feel like it's been a while since I've seen you, too. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Hello, Sane. And uh, Dark Ninja. First time. Well, welcome. Welcome to the Coding Garden. Thanks again, Andrew, for that uh, tier one sub. And Mateo Godzilla. Hello. Hello, uh, Jerix and Klein. How's it going? Hello, Handsome Squidward. He actually said my name. Yeah, twice. Twice now. <laughs> What's up, uh, Bravo? And Nessie and Varun. Uh, shines with 100 bits. Thank you very much. Should code if you land on the tip of the tree turn into a star? Nah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's, it's, thank you for the idea, though. Hello, Ludux and Shuburb and Addy and DFD and Milos and Soup Dragon and the real shitty, uh, sh shitty. Hey. 
<laughs> Can you change your name? Can you just change your name for me, please? Because that's okay. Uh, Kuzi, how's it going? Hello, one line of me. And uh, Otters, Randomness, hello. iHacks, Malo, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Why is functional programming getting more popular than OOP? Uh, it's it's not. There's just some very vocal functional programmers. And React got really popular, and it has it uses functional, but. Uh, don't let people make you think that. <laughs> all, all code is fine. Oh, it's a surname? Okay, I, how do I pronounce it? How do I say it without... How do I say this without make, making it sound like a, a, a an English curse word? Let's let's look up how to pronounce... How to pronounce this. Uh, staring at the void. Thank you for that uh, Twitch Prime sub. How to pronounce this. And Raphael, how's it going? Uh, and I didn't mean to offend you, <laughs> if, if that really is your name. Um, it's just so easy to say the wrong way in English. Pronouncenames.com Pronouncenames.com Shilpa Shetty uh, Shetty, yeah, Shetty, Shetty. Hello, thanks for being here. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's uh, write some code. Uh, day seven, here we go. So the way this works is when I'll, I'll, I'll click into these others first. Whenever you click into it, um, you will get a problem description. Hashtag ad. <laughs> uh, nice, cool. Um, so when you click into it, you'll get a problem description. And the cool thing about Advent of Code is you can use any programming language you want. You could actually solve it on pen and paper if you really wanted to uh, because the the problem description is very generic and then um, they provide you with your speci your own specific puzzle input so everyone's puzzle input is unique and then they have back-end logic that validates your solution based on your puzzle input um, so it's pretty fun uh, I'm gonna use JavaScript because that's what I that's what I that's what I like <laughs> so let's go day seven handy haver sex um, I'm gonna go ahead and get my local stuff ready Let's make a day seven. And actually, um, what I like to do is just copy my previous day's solution. Like, it's not going to be the only useful part about it is that it's just all set up. It has a README, it has a uh, simple code for reading in a file. This one is pretty solvable by using Control F. Well, let's see. <laughs> all right, so. Um, Let's bring down the problem description. Day seven, handy haversex. Cool. Um, we'll figure out what the sample input is in a second. And then this was my input for day six, but let's see what my input for day seven looks like. It is this, lots and lots of sentences. Well, that looks like fun. There we go, so that's in the input. Thank you all for that hype train. Um, and then in here, we're just going to have a basic little thing that um, reads in the sample file. Wait, where did that come from? <laughs> okay, let's, let's, try, let's try to uh, figure out what this problem wants from us. Um, you land at the regional airport in time for your next flight. In fact, it looks like you'll even have to time to grab some food. Great, great. All flights are currently delayed due to issues in luggage processing. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, due to recent aviation regulations, many rules, which are our puzzle input, so our puzzle input are the rules, um, are being enforced about bags and their contents. Um, yeah, there's ambient sound. My, um, my, my furnace is literally right there, and it's cold here, so... If I just keep talking, I don't think you'll notice it as much. Um, cool. Uh, so bags are enforced uh, about bags. Okay, so the, the rules are being enforced about bags and their contents. Uh, bags must be color-coded and must contain specific quantities of other color-coded bags. Apparently, nobody responsible for these regulations considered how long they would take to enforce. For example, consider the following rules. Light red bags contain one bright white bag, two muted yellow bags. All right. Hey, HB, HVBO, thank you for that five-month resub, resub, who says, yo, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, dark orange bags contain three bright white bags, four muted yellow bags. Bright white bags contain one shiny gold bag. Muted yellow bags contain two shiny gold bags, nine faded, etc. 
Okay, so I see what people are talking about in terms of parsing. Like, you have to figure out, like, what is the target bag? What must it contain? Which is a list of things it must contain. These rules specify the required contents for nine bag types. In this example, every faded blue bag is empty, every vibrant plum bag contains 11 bags, and so on. You have a shiny gold bag. If you wanted to carry it in at least any other bag, how many different bag colors would be valid for the outermost bag? Okay. In other words, how many colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag? All right. Uh, before I read the rest of it, I'm going to go ahead and take this. So this is our sample input. And the way that I like to code this, and probably most other people, is um, you write your code against the sample input, make sure that it works because you have a, a working example because they, they basically provide the solution to the sample input. And if I can get it working for the sample input, then we just run my code against uh, my regular input, which has 600 lines inside of it. And thank you, Mr. F, for that Twitch Prime sub. Very much appreciated. Um, so I, I'll get it working with the sample, run it against this 600 line file, and then uh, should work. Should, should be good to go. Um, that's, this strategy failed me on day three. <laughs> Uh, what was day three? I forget. It's, it's worked for me every day since then. You just have to be careful about how you're parsing the input, but let's keep going. All right. Um, seeing them walk through the example usually makes this make a little bit more sense. Uh, in the above rules, the following options would be available to you. A bright white bag, which can hold your shiny, bag, shiny gold bag directly. So... Um, Bright white bags contain one shiny gold bag. Okay, so a bright white bag contain, can have a shiny gold bag. So we're looking for the one that can have a shiny gold bag. A muted yellow bag, which can hold your shiny gold bag directly, plus some other bags. So a muted yellow bag can have two shiny gold bags. All right. A dark orange bag, which can hold bright white and muted yellow tags, either of which can hold your shiny gold bag. Um, so dark orange bag contain when uh dark orange bag hey ins with the five gifted thank you very much congrats to everybody i i appreciate you um a dark orange bag contains three bright white bags four muted yellow bags okay I'm still a bit confused <laughs> i'm pretty sure we're trying to find the one that can hold the gold bags i don't know what the dark orange bag has to do with that Okay, let's keep going. Um, a light red bag, which can hold bright white and muted yellow bags, either of which could then hold your shiny gold bag. Oh, bags inside, bags inside, bags. I see. Because the dark orange bag can have a bright white bag and a muted yellow bag inside of it, bright white bags and muted yellow bags can have uh, shiny gold bags. So indirectly, uh, we could have our yeah, it's bagception exactly. I'm um, heck, <laughs> Matroska. It's like the the Russian dolls. Okay, that makes sense. Um, a light red bag can hold a bright white and muted. Um, and, and so okay, I'm, this is making sense. So in this example, the number of bag colors that can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag is four. How many bag colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag? All right, so basically what we need to do is we need to first, like we need to do a first pass across this data and find all of the bags that can directly hold shiny gold bags, right? So we find, uh, we see that bright white bags um, can hold them and muted yellow. And then we potentially do a second pass to find all the bags that can contain bright white bags and muted yellow bags. And then from there, we do a third pass. And I think there are nine different types. So we basically have to do nine passes of the data. Um, yeah, nine bag type, nine bag types. Um, oh, if you just go to adventofcode.com, uh, you can get the problem. So this is day seven. Um, and for you, everything will be unlocked up until day seven. You can kind of pick and choose. I've been doing them every day since, but you should be able to click right into uh, day seven. Okay, I think I think this is making sense. We basically do nine passes of the data, and we have our answer, right? I think one one uh, tricky thing here is parsing um, parsing each line, but let's let's do it one one thing at a time. Okay, so 
Uh, I just have this code that reads in the sample file and then um, splits it on new lines. So we basically have an array of each of the lines. So we now have an array with each of these inside of it. Um, I think what I want to do is just parse one line at a time. So let's write a function that parses a line and breaks it out into its constituent parts. So you have the bag type and then you have an array of what it can what it can contain. And, and the number that each of those can contain. So let's let's do it. So um, I'm just gonna do a for, I think I'm gonna, am I gonna do a for loop? For every line, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a for each. <laughs> so somebody somebody asked earlier about a for each. Um, oh, not that. Oh, but let's, uh, these are redemptions, let's do them. Nine passes won't be enough? I'll worry about that when I get there. I'm thinking about this problem simply, at least right now. Um, uh, thank you for that stretch. Sovim Quivera stream. <laughs> thank you very much. And John with the hydrate. Cheers. And Arnav, um, also with the hydrate. Cheers. Yes, yes. Uh, so someone asked the question, can I explain why for each uh, loop is blocking? A for each loop is not blocking. Um, the way to think about it, though, is like, let's say I have a function uh, inside of here. Um, we are here, and then log, we are now here. Now, um, the way this code is going to run is this is going to console log, and then uh, this uh, each function well, it, uh, this function will be executed for every element inside of the array. Like that code has to run before we get here. Now, uh, is that blocking? Yes, in a way that you're not going to get to this line of code until this function has been executed for every element in the array. Um, it is similar to if we had a for, for loop um, and we do some, some function here um, and call it on the element. Like these two, for the most part, are going to behave the same way. Um, where it differs is if you, for whatever reason, had like an async function here. Now, technically, the function is going to execute, but it, the promise may not resolve by the time you get to here. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, these two are going to run the code in uh, the same order. Now, um, certain JavaScript engines might have optimizations that where a for loop is actually faster than a for each or a for each is faster than a for loop. For the, the types of code that I write, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like you're, you're going to see a minuscule difference between a for each loop and a, and a, and a for loop. But, um, uh, but they, they, they work the same way. All the code has to execute before you get to the next line of code. Um, all right. We had another redemption. Uh, oh yeah, let's do a focus mode. Let's go. The ES spec is literally a callback inside a while. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. Are you are you new here? <laughs> Let's all say hi to X Dark Ninja. Um, just uh, just give him a little. If you're if you're a sub, give him a little hello, friend. <laughs> they're uh, they're new, they're new to my overlay. Let's see. They've sent twenty messages. Every single one. It, well, not every single one. <laughs> I was about to say. All the latest ones are attempt to uh, embed HTML, but that's fine. Thanks for being here. First time catching the stream. Um, but yeah, this, this overlay uh, does run some of your codes. Not all your codes, but some of your codes. Um, okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's parse this. Um, so for every line, that's going to give us the, uh, the rule. And... Um, <sighs> Well, actually, that's going to give us the line, and I'm going to write a function that parses that line. So I'm going to turn it into a rule. So I'll say uh, parse line with the line, and that's going to give me back the rule. And then let's just log that rule. So now we need this function, parse line. <laughs> there was an attempt. Well, it's not that it can't find it. It's that I just don't allow images to be embedded unless they're from trusted domains. Because you people are, are, uh, are tricky. Everybody, everybody is a hacker. Um, okay, <laughs> parse the line. We get the line. Um, I think what we're going to do is, so if we look at a, an example input is um, focus. Oh, I, I forgot to enable the focus mode. You're right. Let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, here, focus. Start. Eight minutes. Whew. 
<laughs> Wait, what? Well, hey, Lenid, do you live in Colorado? Uh, when are we getting together to take a group photo of our web dev mustaches <laughs> in Vail and sing karaoke? <laughs> That's actually hilarious. You know, I never thought about that. Like, we could have a coding garden retreat in the mountains. Who'd be up for that? Anybody want to come snowboard? Not now. Like, two years from now. <laughs> After, Hopefully, two years from now, COVID is gone. Um don't come right now. But eventually we'll have a we'll have a coding garden get together in the mountains. Okay, so we have a line like this and uh, we want to break it down. Break it down. So um, I think if we just split it on the word contain. So let's do like left and right. That's gonna be line.split on uh, contain. Um, and if we if we look at our sample input, it's always, always, always split on contain. See, it's always split there. Right? Um so, yeah, I don't think it's ever pluralized. It's always singular. So that's fine. Um, cool. So if we split it on that, we're going to have the uh, left half and the right half. So this is, um, let's call this the type. Uh, not, not yet. We're just going to call it left and right because we have more parsing to do. Um, and we'll say that the type is... Um, the left will just replace the word bags uh, with nothing. And that should give us the type. So that's going to give us the type, which is light red. Um, so after all of this, we're going to return an object that has uh, type. And hey, photo. Photo Al, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Good morning. Good morning. Um, great. So that's going to give us the type. And then the right is going to be uh, this string here, um, separated on commas. So we'll say write dots uh, split, split it on commas, comma space, I think. And that should give us each of the items. Let's look at some of the other samples. Um, here we see no other bags. That's a case we potentially, uh, uh, bags is pluralized. Oh, you're right. Oh, no, 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 this is fine. This is fine. So that's pluralized. The here, we're just looking for the comma. I think it's always it's always a comma space. Should be fine. Um, for now, I'm just going to I'm just going to split it on a comma and let's see what we end up with. Sometimes in the input bags is pluralized. Oh, 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 here, here. I, I see what you mean. We're not, we're not quite there yet. Right now, we're just splitting on comma, and then we're gonna dive deeper into the things that were split by comma and figure out if it was bag or bags. But I think we're good so far there. All right, let's run the code on our sample input and see how far we've gotten. Cool. So the type is light red. The contents is one bright white bag, two muted yellow bags. Uh, the type is dark orange. The contents is three bright white bags, four muted yellow bags. Uh, the content is, yeah, so we're, we're doing good so far. Um, now we just need to parse each of these individual items into their, their respective uh, uh, type. Um, okay. So, uh, and hey, Black Rose, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate you. <laughs> um... Great. So uh, let's so that's let's map this um, for each item. So this each item is going to be one of these. Uh, we basically just want to um, we could do it. We could do a little regular expression. So we could do number followed by type followed by bag followed by an optional s, um, and then we'll have to account for like no other bags. We'll do this. Um, if item matches no other bags, um, then we'll just return undefined. So, well, well, I think I'm just going to filter it after this so we can get rid of it. Um, so, yeah, we get rid of those. Uh, then we can pass it through a regular expression that looks like that matches against that. So, um, we'll say the, um... The count and the type is going to be the item, and we're going to match that against a regular expression that has a digit uh, 0 through 9. Um, is it always lower than 10? It looks like it. 
<laughs> for the most part. Let's just assume it's lower than 10. Actually, um, I'm just going to say match uh, one or more digit in case it is double digits, uh, followed by a space, followed by um, the um, the type. So I want to match uh, one or more of anything, followed by the word bag. Um, yeah, and it starts like this. So. Forgot to remove the periods at the end of sentences. So with this regular expression, I don't think I'll need to do that. So um, I'm basically going to match the number, and then I'm going to match the type, and then just throw off the rest. So whether it's bag, comma, or bags, comma, or bag period, or bags period, I just don't even care about it. That's, so that's what this is going to do. So um, and let's put this in a matching group. Um, so this is going to match the number. This is going to match the type, followed by the word bag. So I think we should be good. So let's just return an object that has the count and the type. Um, we need a little bit of spacing. Uh, yes, thank you, Doc. <laughs> I would have figured that out. Uh, so it starts with, not ends with. Um, it doesn't, my linter doesn't like that I'm reusing a variable name, but I don't care. Let's see what we get. Ta-da! So we have, um, a light red bag can have one bright white bag. A light red bag can also have two muted yellow bags. So we're doing pretty good on the parsing. Um, the only issue is then when we get like undefined. So uh, I'm just going to take care of that by filtering it out. Um, anything that's not undefined. So that should get rid of them. So a faded blue bag has nothing or can have nothing. And a dotted black bag can have nothing. Um, so. Um, I th I think this I think we've done some some a pretty good parsing job if I do say so myself. Um, yeah, yeah let's do that. Thank you, uh, Shark Turnup. Uh, so basically, we could just say the count is equal to uh, itself parsed as a number, and that way, look at that, it's not a string. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, step one done. Um. Now, now, now we have to figure out where our shiny gold bag can fit. Um, and I mean, I think also I want to just keep track of all the different bag types. It says there are nine of them, but I guess I could, I could parse them out. Um, like, let's see, recursion. <laughs> um, so let's say like bag types bag pipes bag types is just an object uh, and then each time I get in uh, each time I get a type I mean I guess we'll use a set because that's basically what I want to do I want all of the unique bag types um, so I'll just say uh, bag types dot add this given type so as we're iterating I'm keeping track of all the unique ones and then after we're done parsing I'm gonna log out all the unique ones here when was this video published on YouTube? I just missed the beginning. Oh, uh, I mean, I just started the premiere. Is that what you mean? <laughs> so bright white, muted yellow, shiny gold, faded blue, dark olive, vibrant plum, and dotted black. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Beautiful. Um, what I'm curious of, just real quick, is if we run this on the on the actual input text, um, cannot read property split of undefined. Oh, oh. Let's find the striped lime with light black in the input. Let's see what that up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, there's an empty new line in my input. That's why it broke. Wow. Okay, there's a whole lot more than just nine unique different types <laughs> in the input. Yeah, it was because of the space at the end of the file. Um, so th th so this is why I thought we only had to iterate nine is because it said there are nine different types. But if we look at the input, there's a ton. Um, and so with my logic, this is the number of iterations we would need to do over the data. Um, because for each one, we got to go one level deeper to see what it has in it. Okay, let let's, let's, let's keep coding. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go back to the sample text. Recursion. Everybody's saying recursion. Um, okay. So, at this point, what I'm thinking 
is we need to do a, a first pass on our rules here to find all of the ones that can directly hold gold bags. I mean, also, couldn't we, we could like build a tree, couldn't we? Like we have a, basically a hierarchy. If you have gold bags at the bottom, uh, meaning like the, these are the leaf nodes, and then they have parent nodes, uh, uh, two parent nodes, which are bright white and muted yellow, and then bright white and muted yellow has parent bags that can hold those. Yeah. But I don't know. Let's just uh, let's just keep coding. I mean, it's an idea. <laughs> it's an idea, but I'm gonna keep coding. Um, the thing is, it doesn't have to be performant. Like I could literally let this run on my computer for several hours and then just output the answer. It's not gonna take hours, but um, let's see. When, why did we see nine da bag? Okay, these rules specify the card. Yeah, so nine bag types. Um, but if we look before, what was this set size? 422 so that would be 422 iterations of the array that's not so bad i feel uh, yeah it's 422 i feel like we could do it in this way that i'm talking about of diff multiple passes of the data and it would still probably not take that long oh well let's get it working on the sample input so uh, what i'm thinking is uh we f do a first pass that finds all the bags that can contain um uh gold gold bags shiny gold bags Cool. So, um, say so the rules are equal to um, parse line on a map. So, uh, take in those rules, parse, uh, take in those lines, parse them into an array of rules. Um, and then we could say something like uh, parents, gold parents. <laughs> is equal to um, let's uh, find parents for those given rules um, and we're looking for uh, shiny gold yeah and let's just log these here so the idea of this function is it's gonna basically look at all of these and it's gonna find any ones where the contents can be shiny gold um, and actually uh, what I'm gonna do is instead of this being an array I'm gonna make it um, a map it's gonna be a map of type to count so that way I don't have to search the array I can basically just immediately check the map to see if it has that type um, so let's adjust this so um, um, contents um, instead of a map let's do a reduce because we're going to reduce it into an object uh, and then we won't need to do a filter so we're reducing it into an object um, and we're going to say by uh, type and we just remember to return that every time by type um, we'll call this item and we'll say, uh, well, actually, we don't even need to do that. We just need to say by type at type equals plus count, like this. Um, and then we don't need to create this little object. Java's always trying to update. Just stop. I should probably just uninstall Java. Well, actually, I need uh, uh, Android Studio. But OK, so um, now instead of turning it into an array, we're turning it into uh, an object that has uh, the type as the key and the count as the value. But what that's going to allow me to do in this second iteration, I don't need to search an array again. I can just immediately reach into this object and say, hey, do you have that type? Uh, let's make sure it works. Let's just log out all of our rules again. Uh, and it does. But you'll notice now, instead of this being an array, we can easily just say, hey, does a shiny gold bag have a dark olive bag or, or et cetera? OK. And then in this case, um, why is contents undefined? Oh, because uh, if no other bags, we just need to return an empty object. That's all. <laughs> there we go. So it can't it does can't have anything. Now, uh, on to the next one. Yeah, I was clearing it. Uh, so on to the next one is uh, we need to find the parents. I guess we could say find holders. Find, yeah. 
Wouldn't a parent type type count? I mean, at that point, we're creating a tree, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it would be uh, shiny gold, dark olive one, shiny gold, vibrant plum. I mean, I, I, I think I'm okay with this. I'm not going to overthink it because this really doesn't have to be that optimized. Um, but okay. Find parents. We get the rules and we get the type. Um, and we need to find, well, actually we need, um, a list of all the parent types that can hold this given type. So let's just return rules.find, um, where rule.type is equal to type. Cool. That should be it. And so this should give us the two parents of shiny gold. Let's see what it does. Um... Oh no no not the not the type. Wait, what? Uh not the type. We want a uh, rule.contents has that type. Cool. So we see that a bright white bag can have uh, a shiny gold bag. Is that it? We're missing muted yellow. Why are we missing muted yellow? Oh, because I did find. I don't I don't want to do find. I want to do filter. Because a find will just find the first one. I want to find all of them. Cool. So I now know that a bright white bag can have shiny gold and a muted yellow bag can have a shiny gold. Great. Um, what do I do with those numbers? So um, how many bag colors can eventually contain at least one shiny gold bag? Oh, so it's just the bag types. I don't really even have to keep track of the counts. Right? Numbers are used in part two. Thank you. <laughs> You're foreshadowing. So we'll keep the numbers. But for now, we actually just need to know the unique types. For now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. <laughs> um, so all I need to keep track of is bright white and muted yellow. Yeah, so... Um, Let's, let's actually do this. Instead of having a global variable called bag types, bagpipes, um, <laughs> we're going to um, create our variable here, and then we'll have a have a little closure on parse line that takes in the bag types. So uh, bag types returns a function. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> but we basically want... Um, this so now um well and uh, and if you if, uh hey why lux thank you for that twitch prime sub if you you the person sitting at home wanted a practical example of closures this is one of them so uh, i have this variable called bag types and i want to reuse it in every iteration of that map so i've created this closure i created this this function that returns a function but now it closes over the scope so this inner function has access to bag types but uh, one thing I can do is instead of recreating that function every time is we, we create a parse version of it. So call this line parser, do this. Um, and then now that has closed over the scope um, and it has the bag types. And so now I can still have those without having that global variable. Um, yeah, there we go. Beautiful. So um, what we need to do... Um, I don't know, my mind just went blank. <laughs> so we're, we're, we found the parents. We found muted yellow and bright white. But now what we need to do is we need to uh, look at all of the bags that can contain bright white and muted yellow. Okay, so we're going to basically need to iterate um, over all of the different bag types. Um, so we have gold parents. And then um, we need to remove those items, remove bright white and muted yellow from these. And then see which ones contain those. I'm just trying to think. I need to know like when to stop. I need to know um, because now that I have bright white and muted yellow, I need to see if anything contains. Actually, I could just keep track of uh, what we've checked so far. I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I could write this manually, right? I could say uh, gold parent parents are going to be, um, well, we, we, we do it multiple times. We have a, 
We need to loop over each of the gold pair and say, hey, William Cameron. Uh, thank you for that reason. We're giving this uh, gold parents. We're going to map each one. Uh, we get the parent. And we want to do find parents um, with the rules and um, parent.type. This is the parent parents. So we have. Uh, we start with bright white and muted yellow, and then uh, light red. Um, wait. Light red and dark orange. Uh, my laptop isn't black. I have a cover on it. It's just a 2015 MacBook Pro. It's uh, aluminum, I guess. I don't know. Let's go back to the problem description, because now we're getting light red, light red and dark orange, which is where we are here. Uh, so a dark orange bag can have a bright white and muted yellow bags. A light red bag can hold bright white and muted yellow bags. Light right, yep. Um, either of which can then hold your shiny gold bag. I guess actually we just iterate until the parents are no longer found um, as a contents. The moment we search for parents and can't find anybody that have those parents, we're done. So, um, Right? I'm having I'm having trouble thinking about how I'm gonna actually code this, but let's just say um Yeah, we'll call this parent parents. Um and if um the length of the parents parents is Zero, then we're we're done. We break out of the loop, something like that. Um, oh, <laughs> there's a rickroll on top of the tree. What's up, Chad? <laughs> uh, wouldn't that be an infinite loop if you store a bag in a color that can store it? I would think we don't have that kind of loop in here, but probably. Yeah, it would be. Like, if we ran into that where red can have blue and green can have red. Um, but if we run into that, we basically have to detect it. Grandparents. That's what parents' parents are, aren't they? <laughs> um, let me just think about this really quick. So, I don't even know if I want to map. I think I want to I wanna reduce it into, a like, a flat array. Um, grandparents. So we can return uh, grandparents.append find parents of that given type. It can't be, says Noobsard. Okay. Um, grandparents equal that, and then uh, let's log these. And um, I'm not going to do it forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going off the deep end, but we're going to just do this once uh, just to see what we get. While count is less than one. So just do this once and then uh, count plus equals one. Um, let's see what we get. Grandparents.append is not a function. Oh, not append, not append. Uh, well, uh, concat, concat. Oh, I, I want to reduce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why didn't I? I should have changed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it was state of map. It's state of map. Okay. Beautiful. Um, so this gives us back light red, dark orange, light red, dark orange. Now, why do we have duplicates? Um, 
show because the parents can hold both of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in that case, we actually don't want an array. Again, we want uh, we want a map so that they stay unique. First try. <laughs> Or a set, yeah, we could use a set. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use a, uh, an object. I like to use objects as sets. Um, because sets didn't always exist in, in uh, JavaScript. Um, okay, yeah, so we don't want to concat. Um, so we're going to return grandparents every time. I'm going to say the parents equals that. And then we'll say parents for each parent. Um, the uh, grandparents at that parent dot type equals that parent like that. It doesn't like that I'm assigning inside of that, but this is fine. Um, great. So now we end up with uh, light red, which can have bright white and muted yellow and dark orange. So we got rid of the duplicates. Um, and at this point, I think we would search again to see if there are any bags that can hold light red or dark orange, and if there aren't, we're done. Right? Right? I think... I think that's the... That's it. Um... Yeah. And then, um, okay, I have an idea. So, um, wait. I have a lot of reused variables. It doesn't like what I'm doing here. But basic, I think what I want to do after this is I want to say, uh, parents, um, equal uh, object dot uh, values um, of the current parents because we basically uh, oh no of results because we here um, and then I just want to say if parents dot length is equal to zero, meaning we didn't find any parents, uh, we just break out. So it should stop after one iteration. It stops after one iteration. Beautiful. Um, meaning we can just keep track of the count as we go. So let's say um, total bags. <laughs> Uh, starts off as uh, parents.length, like the different bag types that can hold a shiny gold. Um, and then we'll say total bags uh, plus equal uh, results.length. No, no, um, parents.length. Because we're going to increase the total. And at the end of it all, uh, we've done it. The answer, We should get the answer four. And we do. It's ugly. Now, I know this code is ugly. Let's just see if it works on the input. If it works on the input, that's fine with me. Uh, so let's go. Do we get an infinite loop? We don't get an infinite loop, and we get the number 367. Um, does this number sound reasonable to anybody that has done this problem already? I guess I shouldn't ask that. I should just plug it in. I'm just going to plug it in. Let's cross our fingers. 367. Here we go. I got it wrong. The answer is too high. <laughs> So uh, that's not the right answer. Your answer is too high. If you're stuck, make sure you're using the full input data. There are also some general tips on the about page, or you can ask here. Okay, uh, please wait one minute before trying again. Now let's figure out what I did wrong. Uh, but my, I know that the, it needs to be high. It needs to be lower than 367. The strategy only fails if you did things horribly wrong, <laughs> which I just did. Um, should be lower than what do we say? 367. Um, I could just try 366. <laughs> uh, what, what I'm going to do though is uh, on every iteration, I'm going to log what those, what those results are. 
Okay, so it probably needs to, if yours was 139, I feel like mine needs to be a lot lower than that. Um, okay, this is a ton of logging, but let's, let's see how we do. Oh, would it ever be like a parent's 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 like would get, um, like a great grandparent would get counted multiple times? Everyone has different inputs, yeah. <laughs> Keep guessing. <laughs> um, so, Dim Tan can have Mirrored Bronze, Drab Olive, Wavy Olive, or Dark Tan. Let me look at the parents of Dim Tan. <laughs> Try every value less than 368. Uh, the the time the amount of time increases of when you can submit your answer every time. Um, okay, let's go back to the sample input. The answer should be around 130. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go back to the sample input. So, before the loop, um, the total length is two because there are two bag types that can hold shiny gold. And then we look at the rest of the data again to see which of those bags can contain the parents. In this case, it's light red and dark orange. And then when we see what bags can contain light red and dark orange, we don't see any. And so we're done. Um, looks fine. I'm going to run this through the debugger just, just to see if I can spot anything. Like, let's look on like the second or third iteration. Oh, your answer was 348. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to debug this. We're going to step through this one one at a time and um, uh, see what we get. And actually, I'm even going to do this. Uh, so I'm going to find the initial parents of, of uh, shiny gold. And then let's just stop there. So in my input, what are all the parents of shiny gold? Uh, dull gold, clear white, vibrant aqua, plaid crimson, Um, muted yellow, faded cyan, and bright gray. So in the first pass, these are all the parents that can have shiny gold as a child. Fine. And then we do another pass with these, bright gray, faded cyan, muted yellow. Um, yeah, so we're gonna log the first set of results and then let's actually just let's just break out. I want to see the first set of results. So um, it's a lot. So first pass, these are all the ones that can have shiny gold. And then second pass, these are all the ones that can have the previous one. So um, wait, are you tagging yourself, Doc? What just happened? Uh, am I using recursion to find parents of each of the parents or going man? I'm doing it manually. So I have a, an, uh, an infinite loop that breaks when I don't find any more parents. So right now, uh, I just say, while true, find all the parents of the current parents. Oh, I'm not reassigning. Uh, why am I? No, I am reassigning parents. I am. So uh, this finds all the parents of the current parents. And then um, the next iteration finds all the parents of those parents. And if we ever don't find any parents, we're done with the loop. That's how I'm doing. I'm not using recursion. It's just basically infinite loop, infinitely looping until we know that we're done. I need to count the distinct bag types. Oh, I see. So it's is it possible? Okay, actually, let's run this once, and um, let's see. Of all these parents. Yeah, I think I think I get what you're saying. Of yeah, okay. Maybe maybe that's it. So if we look at um, um and we can't just do total bags, we need to keep track of all the ones that we've seen. Eh. Um let's just call it valid bag types. Um and so every time we have parents we just um, add them in. So we'll do uh, parents for each one, 
we get the let's grab off the type and let's say valid pack types dot add uh, the type um, Three sixty seven and and two twenty nine. So this is the number we want. Um, that's that's the answer. It's unique. We weren't we weren't counting uniques. Uh, I'm not going to try to pretend like I completely understand why that's the case, but we're going to get it right. Is everyone ready? Get your get your drum rolls ready. Get your pog champs ready. Um, all we had to do was just pick out the unique ones. Drum roll, please. Uh, that's the right answer. Okay, so that that was the issue. So I basically um, my my parents' parents had some duplicates in there, and that makes sense because a bag. Okay, I think I understand why now. A bag can hold multiple types, and so on uh, some next iteration, we could be looking at the same parent bag because it can have multiple types. Yeah, great, wonderful. All right, now on to part two. So uh, the way these advents of codes are breaking down, are broken down, um, is you do part one, and then there's a part two which uses the same input data, but now you have to calculate a different problem. All right, uh, it's getting pretty expensive to fly these days, not because of ticket prices, but because of the ridiculous number of bags you need to buy. Consider again your shiny gold bag and the rules from the above example. Faded blue bags contain zero other bags, dotted black. Vibrant plum bags contain 11 other bags. Vibrant plum, yeah, five faded blue and six dotted black. <laughs> A bag of holding <laughs> can hold everything. <laughs> Um, a dark olive bag contains seven other bags. Great. So a shiny gold bag must contain one dark olive bag and the seven bags within it. Plus two vibrant plum bags and the 11 bags within each of those. What? <laughs> of course the extra rolls have a small chance of going several levels deeper than this example, so be sure to count all the bags, even if the nesting becomes topologically impractical. Here's another example. Okay, so this is another sample input. That's fine. But what they're saying is for the original sample input that they gave us, the answer for this problem is 32. Let's figure out why. <laughs> yeah, the weight of the bags is not an issue, but I would assume eventually these problem descriptions are going to get to the fact, like, for whatever reason, we're traveling, traveling to the North Pole or from the North Pole, but... Uh, just think of Santa Claus. Santa Claus probably has one shiny gold bag that can have lots of other bags inside of it. And, and that's how he's able to have all the presents for all the kids in the world, shiny gold bags. Now, for us, we're just traveling. Uh, so I don't know why we would need that, but that's it's the it's bag of bags. Um, okay, but we have uh, this input, and the answer for this input is 32. 32. Um, so a shiny gold bag must contain one dark olive bag. Let's see. How do, they, how do they mean? A bright, a dark olive bag contains three faded blue bags and four. Wait, 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 wait. But why? Santa's bag of holding. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, the sum of the children? I, I'm just trying to understand this description here. So, consider my shiny gold bag and the rules from the above example. Faded blue contains zero, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, I missed the first sentence. It's getting a pretty expensive to fly these days, not because of ticket prices, but because of the ridiculous number of bags you need to buy. I don't see how my shiny ba gold bag can hold these things, though, because it's saying um, a bright white can contain a shiny gold bag and a muted yellow can contain a shiny gold bag. Instead of going up the tree, I now need to go down. Okay. So I look at bags that can't hold shiny gold bags. Line five in the rules. One, two, three, four, five. 
Oh! Okay, I see it. I see it. Shiny gold bags contain one dark olive bag and two vibrant plum bags. I see. Now we go the opposite direction. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. So we start here. Then we go to dark olive. Dark olive can hold three and four. Uh, a faded blue and dotted black. Then we go to dotted black and faded blue. Um, and because a shiny gold can have vibrant plum, we go into vibrant plum, which has faded blue and then has dotted black. And faded blue and dotted black don't have anything. Whew. I did not realize that our shiny gold bag had something inside of it as well. <laughs> that was, that was, um, okay. So. Yeah, we should be easy. We just go in the opposite direction. Right? Right? <laughs> we can just go down the tree until we reach bags that cannot contain any other bags. All right, let's just try to get the answer 32, and then we'll move on from there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and create... Uh, and actually, I should have just... For part one, that's the answer. Let's get rid of all these other console logs. Great. That was part one. Hello, Fantasy Teapot. How's it going? Uh, now we want a part two. Puzzle two. Same thing. Uh, read the input. Um, actually, I, I didn't actually even care about bag types, but that's fine. Parse all the lines. Um, and then we go in the reverse direction. Should be easy enough. Um, so the way we did it before was we found all of the parents of shiny gold. We need to find the children. Find the children. All the rules and uh, shiny. Wait. Yeah, shiny gold, right? So we, we need to dip into our data, find the information about shiny gold, and that's going to give us back these, and then we go one level deeper. Um, Honestly, I might just write the code the code in line. I don't know if I'm going to create some other functions. Um, yeah, and actually, this is giving us currently parse. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, instead of getting an array of rules, I think I just want to. I want to create a. Uh, I want to create a map of type to uh, bag because then then I'd have to do less searching um, so let's just call this bags we're gonna reduce the lines um, it's gonna give us back bags bags just a little object um, return the bags but we'll say um, The rule is that, and we'll say bags at rule dot type equals that rule. And at this point, we should have a nice little map of all of the bag types and their rules. Um, I forgot an equal sign. So we have that light red can have bright white and muted yellow. Dark orange can have bright white and muted yellow. Bright white can have bright white and shiny gold. Um, shiny gold can have dark olive and vibrant plum, etc. So uh, now that we have this, I can just reach in and grab the shiny gold one. Um, so we get the uh, shiny gold bag. <laughs> it's just going to be bags at shiny gold. And then I need to look at its contents, dark olive and vibrant plum. And we'll grab those out of this high level object. So we'll just grab, um, what we'll just have, I just pasted some stuff. So we'll grab uh, dark olive out of here, which is gonna give us faded blue and dotted black. And we're also gonna grab a uh, vibrant plum. Now, um, how do these calculations work? A shiny gold bag must contain one dark olive bag 
and two vibrant plum bags. So we have the shiny gold bag. Where's the seven coming from? The dark olive? Dark olive bags contain three faded blue bags. Shiny gold. Oh yeah, okay, one times the amount that an, an um the amount of bags that can be held by that child. Okay. So total starts off at one. And then uh, for each child, you take the count multiplied by the total number inside of the uh, of that the total that it can contain. So dark olive can have three faded blue. So you have three times the number of bags that can be in a faded blue bag. Faded blue can contain no other dag bags, so it's just uh, three. And the same here. So that's four, five, six, seven that can be held in the dark olive. Um, so that's seven here, and then vibrant plum has five faded blue and six dotted. Both of those can contain nothing, so that's 11, but there's two, so 11 times two is 22. 22 plus seven is 29, uh, plus one, no, uh, oh, well, we missed this one. Oh, because of the two bags themselves. Right, where's this two coming from? The droplet is floating in the air. Oh, there, yes, every now and then there's there's like some weird physics where uh, the snowflake will like hit it in a certain way and it'll kind of just like f float. Uh, the two dark olive bags. Getters and setters. Oh, these two. Okay. Oh, and then um, I see we're, we're, it's what the shiny gold bag can contain. So it starts off at zero. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I am. I'm, I'm getting it. We're, we're almost. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm just trying to wrap my mind around the problem. I think that's the hardest part. It's just what are we trying to calculate here? But um, basically, we start at the shiny gold bag, and then we look at all of its contents. Um, so we can say. Uh, shiny gold bag dot uh, contents the number of items in there so I could do like uh, object dot keys of the contents dot length total bags uh, gets added by that wait Oh, but it's not just the number. They have to be multiplied by their type. Okay, so um, I can do object dot uh, key uh, values of uh, shiny gold bag dot contents. So that's going to give me all of the children of shiny gold here. Do I want the values? No, I want the entries. <laughs> Um, and we'll just, for now, we're just going to iterate. I'm going to like solve it for the sample and then like verify just writing it out and then I'll figure out how do I solve it generally. Um, cause that's going to give us each bag and then we can say total bags plus equal, uh, bag. Oh no, that gives us the type and the count. Um, plus equal to count. But we need to multiply the count times the number of bags that it can contain. Um, right? The example at the very end with all the bags of two makes it easier to understand the bag exception. Uh, that's right. I didn't even look at this one. Okay. Uh, it's not showing us the math, though. Do I have to add the gold bag to the total? I think it's uh, how many individual bags are required inside your shiny gold bag. Yeah, so it's not the gold bag. You don't count the gold bag. You count all the bags that the gold bag can have. <laughs> um, oh, 
Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so we should be good here. Actually, we do, in this case, just add the count um, be uh, because the... Um, and this needs to be a, a let variable because shiny gold can have one dark olive and two vibrant plum. And so this little loop right here is going to add one and then two. Great. The other thing we need to do, though, is we basically need to do this for those two bags and add the counts and keep going. Um, so it's a bit of a recursive call. But we need to say, like, um, total bags plus equals count times uh, number of bags in this bag. Uh, that given type. Because that's going to give us... Uh, one plus one times the number of bags inside of that plus two plus two times the number of bags inside of that um, So do we write this function now number number of bags in that type? Let's try it. Let's try it um, I guess I could just do it in line is this gonna be like sort of recursive. I don't know. Let's see what happens I already wrote that function did I? <laughs> oh Is it? Is it, um, it's this, isn't it? It's the, oh, oh, you're right, doc, right? It's the first problem. I just have to generalize this. So instead of uh, shiny gold, I pass in the type, right? Is that what you're saying, doc? Because I would just be done if that's the case. I gotta, I gotta re, I gotta rework this into um, the number of, is it the same though? It's not the same. The function is coming in from inside the function. Um, did I already? What do you mean? Did I already write? Is that this? That's not this. What was this solving? Kinda. This is all the bags that can contain this bag. I just got the number of bags inside the shiny gold. Hmm. Oh, this. Oh, you're saying this this is this is it. <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. This is it. <laughs> I need to put this in a function. <laughs> and this, this is our recursive function. So we have a function, a number of bags in a given type. Uh, and now now we can uh, now we can generalize this. So this right here where we say the shiny gold bag. Um, instead of that, we do bags at the type, um, and honestly, honestly, um, I guess we can pass in all the bags here, bags and type, um, Do, 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 do. Uh, and now this is the uh, inner type. All right, let's call this the child type. Bags and I, the function is coming. I, I literally just wrote this function. Uh, so let's just call this bag. All right, this is it. We're done. <laughs> this is this is the, this is the solution, right? This should this should do it. This should do it. Um, give me the answer. Uh, number of bags in the bags, and we're looking for shiny gold. Yo! Thirty-two. <laughs> no, two twenty-nine. What are we looking at? Sample. We are looking at sample. Let's not do puzzle one. Let's only do puzzle two. The answer is thirty-two. That's right. According according to the sample input, the value would be 32. That was way too easy. Okay, let's try a different sample and see if we get back 126. And if we do, uh, we've done it, everyone. We have done it. Okay, so that's sample two. We're looking for, what are we looking for? 126. Ta-da! All right, now let's just run it on the input. We're almost done. <laughs> 
6683. All right, can I get some drum rolls? Uh, that was... <laughs> I'm offended how easy that was. So the amount of just like, uh, what is it like stalling I did to write this simple function is is insane. Um, but we did it. <laughs> we we solved it. Uh, and actually, I should I should return this. That's why it's um, logging on the fine. Drum roll, please. Six six eight three. We did it. First try. First try. Great. <laughs> All right, that's it for me today. I got to go to work. Uh, thank you all for hanging out and um, cheering me on while we did that. Uh, if you want to participate in this, just head to adventofcode.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this took me seven hours. <laughs> that's fine. Everyone has their own journey. I myself have been coding for a very long time, so, and I'm used to breaking down problems. Actually, I mean, for those of you that are new here, if you're, uh, I mean, if you, if you haven't heard of me, hello, my name's CJ. <laughs> but if you go to my YouTube, we actually haven't done a, uh, a Code Wars um, in a while, but it, we used to solve problems like this every Wednesday. Um, if you check out, um, uh, we have a playlist. Where's our playlist? Uh, uh, Code Wars. Code Wars Code Goddess. <laughs> so for the past, like, two and a half years, um, I've been solving little challenge problems like this, doing it live, breaking down how I solve them. And so you can you can watch that kind of thing on uh, on YouTube. But I will say like, for those of you that where it took you longer than it just took me, that's fine. I have a lot of practice. I have a, probably a lot more practice than you have, uh, which is why I'm able to do it better. It, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not a genius. I'm not magic. I, I've just put a lot of practice in. <laughs> well, welcome Reading Waters, welcome, welcome. Oh, thank you, uh, Paps. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of new people here. I appreciate you being here. Um, I'm going to go very soon, but if you check out the frequently asked questions, um, I tell you what code editor I'm using, what font I'm using, um, what keyboard I'm using. Um, you can get a link to all of my um, uh, extensions and such. I'll, I'll just go ahead and link this. If you go to my VS Code settings, you can see all my uh, plugins and, and all that good stuff. Uh, the problem was figuring out how the recursion should work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So th this will be uploaded um, uh, probably like a week from now. I'm pretty behind on uploading my VODs to YouTube. But um, if you check out that uh, <laughs> Code Wars playlist, and I think we have a command for it. Um, Code Wars. There's, there's a ton of times in the past where we used a set, we used a map, we used an object, that kind of thing. Alrighty. Oh yeah, yeah, we're so close to 100k subs. Um, I'm, I'm thinking we might do a live stream New Year's Eve celebration for 100k subs. Um, I have to talk to my partner because I don't know if, I mean, we don't have plans, we're not going anywhere, we're just gonna be here, but I likely wanted to just spend time with her on New Year's Eve, but I'll let you know if it's going to happen, but we may do a, a 100k subs New Year's Eve bash or something like that. It would be fun. We got to do something because that's that's a lot. That's a big number, and I appreciate you all for, for subbing on, on the YouTubes. Okay, I'm going to go. We're going to do a raid. Uh, here are the raid messages. Um, if you're a sub, this is your raid message. If you're not a sub, this is your raid message. And uh, thank you for the, uh, the congrats, Elissi. Um... I can't I can't really even believe it. I mean look, even on Twitch, we're close to 25k follows. Why? <laughs> why why are you following me? Um cool. Well, yeah, uh, I don't know where we're gonna raid, but wherever we go, uh share the love, drop a follow if you like what they're doing. Um and the next stream is planned for Friday. And it's gonna be a longer one. It's gonna be you know, uh, typical I don't have to work on Friday streams. <laughs> So yeah, if you're new to Twitch, a raid is where we take all the viewers of this stream and we send them over to another stream. So I'm going to find somebody real nice for you. Uh, I don't know who it is yet, but in roughly two or three minutes, we're all going to head over there and show them lots of love. Um, if you followed, if you gifted subs, if you subscribed, if you gave bits, I appreciate you. You're going to see your name in the credits. And until next time, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. 
And until next time, I don't usually start the sentence with until next time. I messed up. See you later. to mention for anybody that, that's still here i might actually stream this evening but i'm gonna be opening pokemon cards now i realize uh i'm an adult <laughs> but i recently got interested in pokemon cards and uh so if you want to if you want to see me opening packs of cards and that's honestly why i got into it is because like opening a pack of cards and like just the anticipation of what's inside uh pretty exciting so <laughs> i've got some uh i forget the the name of the, the expansion but there, there some some more recent pokemon cards uh and i'm gonna be opening those on stream this evening so tune in for that i'm not gonna send a discord notification i don't want to bother people that don't care about uh pokemon cards <laughs> so yeah i'm actually i'm gonna break the seal i'm gonna open the packs live on stream uh, this evening so tune in for that and follow on Discord and all that good stuff if you want to see something like that. Alright, alright, I'm gone now. doesn't matter too much so adjust with key uh and here we i don't know who this is but i think we're gonna raid them they're solving advent of code with haskell which right. looks like and an after, alien language uh, if um if you've never seen haskell before so we're gonna go over there show them lots of love that should be yeah this would be mapped at the just key uh, what is wrong here? Uh, but...